Yo, hey, so let's take a look at how to chop some breaks with the polyene tracker. I recently just got this one, so I'm definitely still learning, but uh, I've been using trackers. I started with trackers in the early 90s, so tracking is not a new thing to me. But today, I will take a look at how to chop some drums because it's not necessarily super straightforward to you if, if you're not familiar. So today, let's chop some drums with Polyan Tracker. Let's just get into it. First, you have to load a sample. So I actually have it here. I just made sure that I got something here. Got some ni nice drums. Let's just load it. So it's going to be loaded here into an instrument. You can choose the instrument with these arrow keys. So I'll just go here. So I've selected instrument one and Sharon Jones and the Dub Kings break import. So it gets imported here. Okay, I'll just go, I won't touch any of the settings. You can go import low quality if you want to, but I'll just import normal. So here we are. So you have to chop this before you can play it. So we're going to chop this bad boy up. So let's go to a sample editor. Oh, no, sample playback actually. So here you see you have slice and you have beat slice. So let's just use slice mode now. We're going to be using beat slice once we want to play the drums, but let's start with slicing. So how to slice things and what's the most convenient and fastest way to do it. For now, I feel that is this. You go for auto slice and confirm and you get a lot of slices here but there's actually no logic to this other than i think it's based on a threshold and you cannot set the threshold yourself so how do you go adding some slices you can actually add some slices here if you hit add slice you see it appeared here if you add another slice it adds it here well what happens if i click add once more it adds it here and if I click it once more you get another slice here and it just doesn't make sense I'm sorry I've, I've actually uh, emailed Polyant about this because I think this should be kind of fixed but this is actually why I wanted to show you how to do this so let me actually or I want to so, show you the best practice that the way that I've, I've been doing this since I've got this so I'm gonna start with auto slice Okay, so we start here and here you select the slice, the current slice, and you can then, you can play it. So slice one, okay, I'm happy with this. Let's actually zoom this so we can see. So slice one, sounds good. Let's move to slice two. Like I've selected this field and you can also use these arrow keys to select the slice here. So slice one, two, three, four, five. And each time you hit the pad, you will hear the slice. So I'm using this technique to set the start point and also add slices behind after the currently selected slice. So slice one is good to go, that's fine. Slice two, I want to adjust the start point. You can actually use these arrows, which can be kind of nice. So. I'm using these arrow keys to move move around here. So I'm going here, adjust, and you can do, do this fine tuning. You can also use the wheel, but this is actually kind of nice to kind of get really nerdy and get the slices tight because when we do jungle 160, 170 BPM music, it has to be tight. So this is fine. So slice three, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna play slice three. Okay, we have to do something. Let me move the start point. And now I wish that this would actually follow and scroll as I play this because we know that actually playhead is going somewhere here. So the way you can actually move is I'll just select the slice, chain slice, so three, slice three, four, and so on. So it'll update the screen, okay. So playing slice three, I want, now I actually want to add a slice because I got this, there's this snare and this drum. So. So, sorry, this kick drum. So we see that the automatic auto slice algorithm actually missed this. So this is what you have to be doing. So let me zoom out a little bit. So I want to add a slice here. And the most logical and fastest way to do it is select the slice that is before the point where you want to add the slice. So that's slice three. I've selected that. Okay, because now when I add a slice, take a look. So the logic to adding a slice 
this was it was killing me in the beginning because like you I just showed you when I was adding slices it always like the logic of adding a slice is that it adds a slice like halfway because like, the slice is here the previous slice was here the next slice is here so when you add a slice it adds it to the halfway see so when I add a slice it'll add it here look and the next slice will be added to the halfway between the slice that you just added and the next slice here. So this doesn't work. So I've now added this slice. And by the way, I used remove to remove the slices that I want. So slice four, I'm playing this. I'm going to adjust this. This is slightly slow with the arrow keys, but it's kind of doable and precise. I want to add a slice for this. So I know that I've now selected this slice. I know you cannot see that this is actually red and these are orange, but I can't guarantee this is selected. So I add a slice and here it is. It's actually pretty nice. There it is. So let's move on. Slice six, which will be this. You cannot see it. So you could either zoom out or do this, what I'm doing. So I'm moving the selected slice, which actually moves the screen. So slice six. And I know, by the way, I know this actually appears very slow because I'm explaining this, but I, I tell you, this is actually very fast once you get used to it. I just really want to teach you how to do it. Okay, I'm going to go with this, slice seven. Once again, moving the start point a little bit. Once again, I'm going to add a slice. So I need a slice here. I want to use this. I want to get this ghost snare. So I know, actually, let me prove my point because I want to add it here. So I know that I have to be, this slice has to be selected. So if I selected this slice, it would mess it up. And this is where I was stumbling in the beginning. So if I add now, I was like, why, why is it there? So the logic is when you have the a slice selected, it'll add a slice in the halfway between the, the current, currently selected slice and the next slice. So I want a slice here. It's, it's selected, there it is. Okay, moving on, slice eight, adjusting the start point. Let me just once again do this, add a slice, it'll be there. Go back, slowly nudging this. For some reason, I like to keep my fingers here instead of using the scroll wheel a lot, which I know probably doesn't make sense. So slice 11, we're here, slightly nudging the, uh, that's fine. 12, ready to go. Obviously you can zoom out to see a little more. All right, so that's good. A few more slices to go. I promise I will be done soon. Like I said, uh, it looks slow, but once you get used to it, it's pretty nice. And the auto slice is a really good starting point because when you get decent dynamics, you get these drum sounds. I hope you get the point. If you don't understand what I'm doing, do leave a comment. Once more, add, so there. You get all this, what I'm doing actually be, becomes a part of your muscle memory or something. So it come, come, becomes really fast. When, you, when you're actually explaining this as you go, it kind of, you, you kind of stumble. Once more, so here we go. You're probably, get what I'm doing now. I think we're done. Yes. So now you see this, this, um, you have this play mode. So beat slice. Now all the, uh, let me just zoom out. So now all the slices can be played with these pads. You can jam out here if you want to. I use the slice mode for slicing and fine tuning. And then when I want to play this, I'm program the pattern, I want to use beat slice. So pattern, da, 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 here we are. So now to put a note here, you need to be in the recording mode. So here, and if you don't do it, you can just find these drums, but let's do something. So record mode, and I'm going to put a kick drum there. And then I'm putting another kick drum there. And by the way, if you don't want this to move each time you add a note, you can put step zero. So you can just, you can, you can add a note and it doesn't move. And what's nice is you can preview these. So how I've always done beats in drum bass is like, I kind of have to do it in my head. So I'm like, doom, doom, da. 
you know, need, need a snare, a snare there. So it's like, doom, doom, yeah. and now would be like Chica. And a ghost snare, that would be nice. Maybe another. Making music while you know that somebody's actually watching is the most horrible thing, but now a ghost snare. Let me try. Yes. Okay, so maybe a kick. Longer snare. And if you want to copy something, because this is like this is like the chica. There's a ghost, like a, there's a hi hat, and then there's, there's a ghost snare. So if you want to copy stuff, because I know I want to copy this chica part. So shift, highlight, copy, move here, shift, this button is paste. So let me try. Yo, it's working. So when, one, when you're in recording mode, it doesn't scroll. But when you leave recording mode, it's like... So now let me do another bar. I had the Chica <laughs> copied to my buffer, so I'll start with that. Did I mess up? Probably not, so. I don't know, I gotta check this. Yeah, it works. That did not work out. Sometimes I just kind of mess up. So backspace, delete, delete, delete this, um, deletes everything. So. What I often do is like I let it play, and once I hear something like I hear where I want to stop, I just hit play. And now here is like Chica. I had the Chica in buffer. Maybe like double kick. This, let's try. It's pretty basic, but hey, it kind of works out. So change the tempo, song, you hold song, and raise the uh, use the wheel and take a look here bottom right corner the tempo is actually increasing so well it sounds a little jerky i i do admit i think this snare cuts short and the thing about this playback one thing that I would like to see is being able to actually ping pong loop these slices and it's not happening so that's a bummer I did email Polly about that but let's see but let me show you a trick because technically what you want to do is because the sample playback goes here you would like it to go back and this is the, you want to have this loop so there's a trick with the tracker you can actually do so let's take a really quick look at the effect so so I'm going to re record mode and I'm going to hold this effects button. So I'm going to look for reverse because technically it'll reverse the playback. I forgot where it is. I'm still getting used to these um, positions. So pardon me for the slowness. Reverse is there. Reverse sample. Let, let me listen. Okay, this is the wrong way. So see, I'm using the scroll wheel here. So you see the direction is changing. So it has to be playing it backwards. That's too radical. 
you know what I'm gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna pitch this step down so FX2 and let's just tune it down it's probably still a sound a bit shit but I forgot ah, yeah tune so so let me try and tune it down It's probably not radical enough. I, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna use another snare, but these effects are nice because there's so much stuff you can actually do with this. And the charming thing about a tracker is it's very limited, but when you're using what you have, it actually, believe it or not, it kind of enhances your creativity. So. So yeah, I wish I could loop this, but maybe I have a longer snare because I'm just looking for like gapless playback. Yeah, it is a very short snare, that has to be said. Okay, this will work. If I wanted to pitch this down or up, I can do what I just showed you. You can do the tuning, but also if I want to pitch down the whole instrument, you go to instrument parameters and the tune is here. So let me just play this and let me mess with the tuning. It almost sounds more natural in a way. I'm probably gonna hate it later, but... Also, if I wanna do a reverb throw, FX2, hold it. Um, was it here? I, I still keep forgetting. Reverb send, so... Nice one, and let's see this. When you go to node mode, and um, see this is nice. Like what I'm doing, I'm record mode, and I have to be in a node field, and I'm using the wheel to actually see what it's doing. It, it's changing the node, so I can preview the node. These are obviously these are the slices that I did in the beginning. These are the chop 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 points. So you can actually just browse, like, because uh, if I want to hear another snare, I just go here, record, note, browse, look for another snare. Maybe I want to pitch this up, get all trackery, get um, tune up. Woo! Well, it sounds a little off, but... Maybe I want to copy this, copy, I'm in copy mode, and paste. Do another ghost snare here, just go uh, record mode. Get all shuffly, funky. Okay, the tuning sounds off, but you know, you just gotta, if you're gonna wanna get like realistic, you don't do that, but sometimes, do you want to do that? Sometimes not. Well, that's it. That's a very rough crash course on how to chop beats. I will be posting more stuff later, but I want to do this in chunks, so there's not too much to chew on. So, yeah, I hope I hope you like it. If there's any questions, do hit me up. Thank you.